Hello, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net and in this video, I'm gonna give you one tip to improve every stroke in tennis. Let's get right to it on the forehand ground stroke, top spin, right? Now, obviously there are so many different tips I could give you, but I'm just gonna give you one for each stroke. And if you follow this, there is no doubt each stroke is going to improve. The first one, two, one, two. It's the number of hands you're gonna use on the racket throughout the stroke. So when you take your racket back, take it back with two hands then hit with one, and then finish with two. Watch Dominic Team when he's practicing his forehands. He's not just pulling the racket back with one hand and then swinging with one hand. He's turning with two hands, and he's finishing with two hands. I love how high he catches the racket. He actually catches it higher than eye level. Watch Venus and Serena, they do the same thing. You want synchronization between the body and racket. So take the racket back with two hands. Notice the tip of the racket's pointing up. I'm gonna drop below the ball for top spin, and then I'm gonna finish high with two hands. So again, it's two, one, two, num the number of hands that are on the racket. All right, let's talk about the two-handed backhand. I want you to finish the way Novak Djokovic does. Many players do bicep curls when they hit the two-handed backhand. And all that gives you is a very short contact zone. What that means is you're gonna hit the frame a lot and you're not gonna get penetration into the back of the court, right? You wanna hit the ball deep. And what is Novak known for? Hitting the ball deep in his opponent's court. So watch Novak when he is done with his two-handed backhand. He finishes with his hands higher than head level. This is what you call air the armpits. If I face you and I hit this ball, notice you can see my armpits, right? My armpits are exposed. Don't hit with your elbows bending like you're doing bicep curls, but rather lift from the shoulders and finish with your hands higher than head level. You're gonna hit the frame less and you're gonna hit deeper into the court. And it's a similar tip on the one-handed backhand. You watch a lot of one-handed players recreationally and they finish as if, if someone was standing to the right of them if they're left-handed, they would actually hit them with their finish. You don't wanna do that. You wanna swing up. You wanna go up almost like you are lifting the hood of a car, right? So I'm at, 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 at my car, I'm gonna change the oil or whatever and I just wanna open it up, right? So I'm gonna open up the hood and you can see my armpit is exposed. So I'm going this way again, right? I'm swinging low to high, armpit is exposed. The ground strokes are an, a vertical swing, upward lifting shot. We wanna lift the ball up over the net, but put, put enough top spin on the ball that the ball dips down. So we don't wanna be swinging across, which is just gonna put side spin on the ball and make the ball sail out. We want to swing sufficiently up enough that that ball has enough spin to then come back down. All right. Let's talk about the volleys. On the volleys, it is so important that you have a great ready position. I've noticed in 24 years of coaching that the higher the level of play, the more players are like, ah, I don't need a ready position. I'm a really good player, Ryan. What do I need a ready position for? Well, I can tell you that the ready position at the net has a big impact in your ability to hit a great volley. I watch three, five, four, oh, four, five players, and they're at the net in tennis, and their racket, or in doubles especially, and they're like this, and their racket's down. They don't even know they're doing it. And then they're late for the ball that maybe is up here. If your racket's off to one side, you'll be late to the other side. Have the racket perfectly centered. I wish I actually had a coin right now, but I would place the coin right on the, the edge of the racket because my racket is vertical out in front of me. Notice my elbows are away. If I put tennis balls in my armpits, I'm gonna lift my elbows up until the tennis balls fall out. When your elbows are out and your racket is vertical, then it makes it very easy to have a great volley. Whether it's a high volley, it's a low volley, you're in the middle of all the volleys. I'm telling you, focus on the ready position at the net, elbows out, racket vertical, and don't really change that position. Just turn and step, turn and step. Watch it from the side. Elbows are out, not in, elbows are out. When I turn, I'm basically still in my ready position, the triangle from my shoulders to my racket. Then I step and swing at the same time. I turn, step and swing at the same time. Focus on the ready position at the net. It's gonna make a big difference. All right, on the overhead. We wanna work on what the non-hitting hand is doing. What I typically see 
on the overhead is the ball goes up and you see coaches teaching this. The ball goes up and it's get the racket behind the head and point to the ball. Well, that's not what you see the pros doing. Look at Roger Federer hidden overhead. His non-hitting hand, which is his left hand since he's right-handed, does three things. It turns with the racket, then it reaches up, which is part of the throwing motion, and then it tucks in against his body. Watch this from the side. Turn with both hands, so instead of facing forward and pointing at the ball, you don't need to point at the ball, right? They say point at the ball so you can track it. Well, nobody in baseball, outfielders aren't pointing at the ball to track it. You don't, when I'm driving my car, I don't have to point at cars to make sure I don't hit them. You don't need to point at things in order to track the ball. We don't point at the ball on a forehand. So we want to turn the way the pros do, and it's part of kind of like the, the football throwing motion, which is turn with both hands and coil. From that coil, we can then uncoil. We're gonna turn, we're gonna reach up toward the ball, and then we're gonna bring that arm back in against the body to create a reactive break and help us swing faster and efficiently. So turn with both hands, reach up, and then tuck the arm up against the body. I'm telling you, look at Roger Federer's overhead. You'll see exactly what I just explained. And the serve. So it is really important that we practice getting out of the waiter's tray position. And if you are someone who uses this service motion, where as soon as you toss the ball, the strings face up, which doesn't allow you to use a circular swing for racket speed. If you're a coach and you see players do this, and I, I know I see this every single day with players I coach, they come in for a lesson and they're struggling with their serve and their palm is up. What you can practice is having the strings facing down like this, right? I'm gonna put the ball in the throat of the racket and just practice I hope it doesn't fall out, <laughs> but just practice moving the racket in over your head without letting the ball fall out. Watch it from this angle. My strings are facing down, right? So I've done this on my serve. I've tossed the ball at this point. Look at Osaka, look at uh, Kyrgios, look at Federer. Their strings are facing down at this point. And then the racket can make this move where the ball hopefully doesn't fall out. It's going to feel weird if you're used to doing this and your strings face up. Now this goes beautifully with what I normally teach you in these videos, which is what? Wear a birthday hat. The proper throwing motion when used on a serve will knock off a birthday hat. So go out and hit serves with a birthday hat on your head and you'll actually hit the birthday hat off on a real serve. In my opinion, the birthday hat is the absolute best way to fix anyone's serve who is currently going palm up. So on the forehand, two, one, two, and catch higher than eye level. On the two-handed backhand, finish like Novak Djokovic, hands up, lift from the shoulders up, and have your armpits exposed to the opponent. On the one-hander, the exact same thing, go up like you're lifting the hood of a car, exposing your armpit to the opponent. On the volleys, great ready position and basically keep that ready position. You could do it with a two-handed backhand volley. From the side it looks like this. Elbows are out, rackets up. And then when I turn, I'm ready. That's the whole point of the ready position. On the overhead, turn with both hands, strings facing down. Remember, it's just like on the serve, right? They're, they're interrelated. You're gonna turn with both hands, you're gonna reach up, and then you're gonna tuck this arm against your body. Watch it from the front. Turn with both hands, reach up, then tuck this arm. Look at Roger Federer's overhead, you'll see that exactly. And then on the serve, practice putting a ball, kind of like you're saluting, put a ball in the throat of the racket and make this move, and then wear the birthday hat and knock the birthday hat off of your head. If you follow each of those tips on every stroke in tennis, there's no doubt you're gonna gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.